you all know that we have already started the online classes and today I am before you to present the classes, the previous classes that you have missed so that you need not to worry about those classes because I will be dealing with the chapters that which we have already dealt with. You can visit our YouTube channel and you can make use of these recordings and you can also learn through these YouTube recordings. So here, today I am going with the first topic that we have dealt with and the chapter is Light Chapter. In the first class, we have read about what is light. As you all know that you have already read in your lower classes, it might be in 7th or 8th, light is a form of energy. You know, light is a form of energy. What is energy? Energy is the capable of doing work. The capability to do work is called energy. Then, if we ask, how is light performing energy? How is light a form of energy? You know, today we could see many objects. We can see this beautiful nature through our eyes. What if there was no light at all? Only we, the God has given us eyes to see but no light. Do you think we will be able to see? No. Why is that? As I said, as it has been told that light is a form of energy, whenever we are able to see all the objects, the nature, and we can see each other, and today you are able to see the class as well. What I am teaching, what I am writing on the board, it's all because of light. Because whenever the light falls on the object, the reflection takes place. That means the light, whenever it touches any surface, the light is going to bounce back. Suppose if I take this as an object and let us assume that the sunlight, the sun rays are falling onto this object, the rays are made to fall on this object, when the light rays fall on this object, if this is an opaque object, if this is an opaque object, what happens? The light will not be able to pass through this object. The light will not be able to pass through, pass through this object. So, what happens? The light will change its direction. It is going to change its direction because the light will be moving in a straight line. So it cannot bend and it can cross over this object. So it is going to reflect back. It is going to reflect back. This bouncing back of light is called as reflection of light. And if I am standing here, okay, and if I am weaving this, if I am weaving this object, okay, then I can see this object. I can see this object. So what is that phenomena which is helping us to see the object? That is reflection of light. If this is incident light and this is reflection. So reflection is one phenomena which is helping us to see the objects. Is that clear? So this is, this tells us that light is a form of energy. Okay. So next, after this, what are the characteristics of light? You know that light travels in a straight line, which property that is called as rectilinear propagation of light. So light always travels in a straight line. And next we have, these are our basics that we will be studying about. Okay. And the speed of light, as we all know, the speed of light is 3 lakh kilometer per second or you can write it as 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second. This is the speed of the light. This is the speed of 
light. And this light exhibits two natures. It has got two natures. One nature is from wave theory, wave theory, which tells us that light is of wave nature. Light is of wave nature. Light is of wave nature. And the particle theory tells us that light is of particle nature. Is of particle nature. Light is of particle nature. Okay. I hope you can see this one. If it is not visible, then let me write it above here. The other one is particle theory, where light exhibits particle nature. Light exhibits particle nature. Is that clear? So since light has two nature, we can say that light is of dual nature. Light is of dual nature. We can say that light is of dual nature. Since it exhibits two properties, okay, two nature of light, that is one is particle nature and the other one is wave nature. Light is also called as transverse wave. Why do we call light as a transverse wave? And it is also called as electromagnetic wave. Why is light called as transverse wave? And why is light called as electromagnetic wave? So first let us discuss why it is called as transverse wave. Because here what happens, the particle nature, as we said, light exhibits the particle nature as of as well. So these particles will vibrate. Okay. So these particles will vibrate. So the vibration of these particles, the vibration of these particles, that is photons we say, right? Packets of energy. So these particles, okay, vibration of this particle and as we said it is of wave nature too. As we said it is of wave nature too, right? So vibration of the particle and propagation of the wave. Okay? So both are perpendicular to each other. They both are perpendicular to each other. So we say that light is a transverse wave. We say light is a transverse wave. Okay. Why do we say light is a transverse wave? Because the vibration of the particles and propagation of the wave both are perpendicular to each other. They both are perpendicular to each other. Suppose if you take a bottle, okay, and if you throw it, a plastic bottle, and if you throw it into the water, you see that the bottle pops up at one place, and you see the water, the waves of water will be moving in the other direction. That means, if this is the bottle which is popping up, and if the water is moving, if the water is floating, that means, when you measure these two, how they are? They both are mutually perpendicular to each other. Mutually perpendicular to each other. Suppose if I take this as a bottle which is popping up in the water and this as a wave. Okay. So how are these? These are perpendicular to each other. These two are mutually perpendicular to each other. So if the vibration of the particle, if the vibration of the particle and propagation of the wave, if both are mutually perpendicular to each other, then such wave we call it as transverse wave. Such wave we call it as transverse wave. We call it as transverse wave. This is one. Second, I said, this is also called as electromagnetic wave. So why this called as electromagnetic wave? You know, there is a spectrum, electromagnetic spectrum, okay, which involves gamma rays, which involves gamma rays, which involves X-rays, ultraviolet rays, ultraviolet rays, yes, and it also 
it was visible light visible light fourth one is visible light visible light then infrared rays infrared rays microwaves microwaves and the last one is radio waves okay now you can see here so what all we have here we have in the electromagnetic spectrum we have gamma rays we have x rays we have ultraviolet rays yeah and then we have visible light infrared rays microwaves and radio waves so out of these how many we have one two three four five six seven we have seven waves right seven radiations we have so out of these radiations you could see here visible light so visible light is also a part of electromagnetic spectrum so we call this visible light is also a is an electromagnetic wave is that clear yes and the wavelength of this visible light is from 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer is that clear yes and these all radiations you know these all uh, these all these all, these all, okay, these all radiations, these all radiations, they are dependent on the wavelength and the frequencies. Wavelength and the frequencies. Is that clear now? Okay, yes. So, gamma rays have the lowest wavelength, okay, and with highest frequency, then followed by X ray, ultraviolet rays, visible light, infrared rays, radio waves, and Microwaves and radio waves. Radio waves have the maximum wavelength and the least frequency. Okay. So these, what are these wavelengths? What are the frequencies and all? You have already dealt with all these terminologies in the previous class in the sound chapter. That is in ninth standard sound chapter. Hope you are well known with those. Okay. If you are not well versed with those terminologies. We will see in the upcoming videos okay so as of now let us only concentrate that light is a transverse wave why light is called a transverse wave it's because the particles the vibration of these particles and the propagation of this wave both are mutually perpendicular to each other because of what we say that the light waves are or the light is a transverse wave light is considered as a transverse wave when it comes to why light is an electromagnetic wave as well? It's because it is a part of the electromagnetic spectrum. So you could see this visible light. And to add one more point to this, dear children, you know, this visible light, this visible light is of white in color. This is white in color. Visible light is white in color. Okay. And when this is refracted, okay, when this is refracted, then you can see different 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 colors okay so that we'll be learning in the further classes that is in the dispersion we will dispersion is splitting of white light into its different colors it's different constituent colors okay that we'll be seeing in further classes but as of now you just remember these points the speed of light is 3 lakh kilometer per second then the light is of dual nature that means it exhibits both particle nature as well as wave nature okay and it is a transverse wave as well as electromagnetic wave is that clear now okay now you can think about like how are we able to see the objects only if light is there then only we can see the objects or in the absence of light also we can see the objects yes if I have to take back to the previous class where you have dealt with two terms that is luminous and 
नॉन लुमिनस लुमिनस एंड नॉन लुमिनस लुमिनस द नेम इट सेल्फ टेल्स अस दैट द ऑब्जेक्ट्स व्हिच एमिट देयर ओन लाइट व्हिच एमिट देयर ओन लाइट एंड नॉन लुमिनस इट्स एग्जैक्टली द ऑपोजिट ऑफ दिस व्हिच इज व्हिच डज नॉट एमिट their own light okay so now we have categorized into two that is luminous bodies and non luminous bodies luminous bodies which emit their own light suppose if the room is completely dark do you think you will be able to see you will not be able to see what i am writing isn't it what if the bulb is on then you can see so with the help of electric supply this bulb is on so this is self luminous okay and if i have to come back and if i have to talk about the self luminous okay that is the natural bodies that is star sun which is the biggest star right so sun is one or the stars you can say all the stars are luminous bodies all the stars are luminous bodies is that clear okay and they are natural bodies and this lamp torch candle light these all are luminous bodies but these all are also luminous bodies but these are artificial is that clear yes so we have dealt with what is luminous bodies and we have also seen the examples right now moving on to non luminous bodies so non luminous bodies what is one all the planets are non luminous moon is also a non luminous body right they have they doesn't have their own light moon and then next if i have to come about talk about the artificial artificial anything you can take this duster you can take this marker if the light is not there you will not be able to see right you will not be able to see these objects these are non luminous whenever the light falls on that that light will be reflected back that light will be bounced back and reaches our retina and then we'll be able to see these objects is that clear so they are the examples of non luminous bodies there is one example you might have seen the uh, firefly okay that is also an example for the living luminous body is that clear hope you have understood this luminous and non luminous as well now moving on to the next topic we'll be moving with the next topic that is the laws of reflection so before moving to the laws of reflection we will be dealing with the terms like what is ray we will be dealing with the terms ray and then incident ray reflected ray then beam of light beam of light okay then convergent also we'll be dealing with and divergent beam of light is that clear so first let us see ray you all know ray is a line okay where it has got one starting point from this it can be stretched beyond this this line says that it can be stretched in one direction it can be stretched in one direction you can draw unlimited line yes infinite line so that is ray which has one end point which has got one end point so if i have to name it as a b then ray ab is represented by ab ray a okay so this is ray if it's one light ray then i call it as ray if there are bundle of rays if there are bundle of rays if there are bundle of rays okay and though if those bundle of rays are parallel to each other as you could see here if the bundle of rays are parallel to each other okay then i call this as parallel beam of light okay this is called as 
parallel beam of light. Why? Because all the rays are parallel. Is that clear? There are multiple rays coming together, then we call it as a beam of light, bundle of rays, we call it as beam of light. If those rays are parallel to each other, then we call it as parallel beam of light. Then coming to parallel beam of light is over. Now moving on to incident ray. Moving on to incident ray. Suppose, suppose if I have a torch here, okay, if I have a torch here, okay, if I have a torch, now the light ray is going to fall on this surface. This is an opaque object. Let us take this as opaque object. Opaque means where the light cannot pass through the object. This is opaque. See, if I hold in front of my eyes, I will not be able to see what is behind this duster, right? Because it is an opaque object. If I take a lens, a glass piece, and if I hold it, then I will be able to see. Why? Because it is transparent. It is transparent material. Because I will be able to see what is behind that, right? Because the light passes through that material, the transparent glass, so we call it as transparent material. Okay, and the last one is translucent. Partially the light will be passing through it. So, and partially the light will be reflected back. So, such type of material we call it as translucent. Okay, so as we are dealing with this is the opaque object. Okay, as the light ray is made to fall on this. Okay, this light ray is made to fall on this object, right, on this surface. So, this light ray which is made to fall on the surface we call it as incident light okay as this is one single ray so we call it as incident ray so as we said this is an opaque object right so light will not be able to pass through this object so what will happen the light will be reflected back the light will be reflected or the light will change its direction and again it will be moving in a straight line so always think one one point, keep in mind, that is the rays that you are going to draw, all the light rays that you are going to draw should be straight line. Why? Because light holds rectilinear propagation of light. That means the light always travels in a straight line. The light never travels in a curved way. As we see that whenever the bullet is fired from a gun in the Rajnikanth movie, you could see that the bullet will be moving in all the haphazardal way and then finally it will be hitting the villain or somebody, right? So here it is not that case, okay? It is going to move, it is going to displace, okay? It is going to displace, that means it is going to move in a straight line, okay? Yes, so the light travels in a straight line, so it is going to reflect back now. Now the light is going to reflect, and this reflection of light, or this bouncing back of light, this ray which is reflected, or which is bounced back from the surface, okay? We call it as reflected ray, and this point, where this light has incident, we call this point as point of incidence. That means this is the point where the light ray has landed, the light ray has incident, the light ray has fallen. Is that clear? So this point we call it as point of incidence and this we call it as, if you want we can name it as A, this point as A. So AO is the incident ray or incident light. O is the point of incidence and OB is the reflected ray. OB is the reflected ray and this is the incident ray. Is that clear? Okay. Now, suppose if I, okay, we'll, we'll see further. Next we have convergent and divergent rays. So what are convergent? The name itself says converge. Converge means where all the rays are going to meet at one point, where all the rays are going to meet at one point, we call it as convergent. Let me show you. Okay. Suppose if the light ray is coming from here, okay? Let me take like this. These are a parallel beam of light, okay? parallel beam of light. So here, all these rays, after a certain point of time, what they are going to, they are going to bend and they are going to meet at one point. Okay? They are going to meet at one point. So, this point, where they are going to converge, okay? We call this as convergent. Okay? These rays, these light rays are called as convergent 
beam of light okay because all the rays are going to meet at one point suppose if i take the mirror okay if i take a mirror then i can show it as if these rays okay so here this point we call it as convergent point where all the rays all the reflected rays all the reflected rays are going to meet at one point so this is called as convergent okay convergent rays where all the rays are going to meet at one point we call it as convergent beam of light okay and divergent is if i have to show from a point source of light this is a point source of light if the light rays from this point they are going to diverge in all directions they are going to move in different directions so when a light from a source okay when the light rays are dispersed or scattered in different directions then we call it as divergent beam of light okay this is what as divergent beam of light if i have to say this one if all the rays are going to come and meet at one point if all the rays are going to come and meet at one point then we call it as convergent beam of light okay so here this is the convergent beam of light and this is the divergent beam of light why because from of this point source of light all the light rays are moving away so we call it as divergent beam of light and here all the light rays are coming and they are meeting at one point so we call it as convergent beam of light is that clear hope oh, hope you have understood the convergent and divergent so why is that i'm explaining all this why because these all are important when you are studying about the ray diagrams of concave mirror convex mirror concave lens and convex lens so these all terminologies we need all these terminologies there while studying the mirror and the lens ray diagrams so we need to be thorough with these terminologies so that we don't face any difficulty there in the further class okay yes so hope you have understood till here so as i said here so this was the incident ray we have dealt with incident ray and the deflected ray okay so here listen carefully so here what happens if i draw one perpendicular line to this reflecting surface this is the reflecting surface this is shaded right so reflecting surface if i am going to draw a perpendicular line if i am going to draw a perpendicular line okay then this we call it as normal we call it as normal okay why normal because this is this line okay p i'll let me make it as p this line po is normal to the surface xy this po is normal to the surface xy so this is the normal which is perpendicular if you measure this angle poy or pox this will be 90 degree this will be right angle is that clear yes so now you understood so this is ao is the incident ray ob is the reflected ray po is the normal ray and xy is the reflecting surface is that clear now okay now in the reflection there are two types one is regular reflection or specular reflection you can say one is regular reflection and second one is irregular reflection irregular irregular reflection one is regular reflection and the other one is irregular reflection this regular reflection is also called as regular reflection is also called as regular reflection it is also called as specular reflection it is also called as specular reflection and irregular reflection is called as is also called as diffused reflection diffused reflection okay diffused reflection one is regular that or specular reflection the other one is regular irregular or diffused reflection now the question pops up what is regular or specular reflection 
and what is irregular or diffuse reflection. Now we know every surface is not of the same kind. With some are rough surfaces and some are smooth surfaces. Not to be very generic. Everyone will not be good, right? Some will be good, some will be bad, it depends. So similarly, here also, the surfaces, okay, some will be smooth, shiny, some will be rough surface. But no matter whether it is rough surface or smooth or shiny surface, the reflection does take place in both the case. Maybe not correct, right? No matter we are good or bad, we have to live the life. Similarly, whenever the light falls onto the rough or smooth surface, the light has to reflect. It doesn't mean, here the surface is smooth, let me move in a curvy nature, huh? let me take turns, many turns. No, light doesn't do that. Light will always move in a straight line, irrespective of the rough surface or the smooth surface. Okay, so based on those surfaces, based on the nature of the surfaces, we have two reflections, that is regular reflection and the irregular reflection. Let us see now. So this example you can see here, the same I'll draw here. Suppose if this is the surface, okay. So now, this is the reflecting surface. The top one is the reflecting surface. So this reflecting surface is smooth, shiny and soft, okay. When I incident a beam of light, when I incident a beam of light, okay, so these, this is a parallel beam of light. So when this, a parallel beam of light is incident on the smooth surface, okay, on a smooth surface or a shiny surface, what happens? The reflection takes place. The reflection takes place in the same pattern as that of the incident light. So here the incident light, here the incident light, here the incident light is, let me erase this so that it will be easy to understand. Okay. So here the incident, this is the parallel beam of light. The parallel beam of light, these all rays are parallel to each other. So when it reflects back, it also it follows the same pattern as that of the incident ray. So all the rays are parallel. Okay, they follow one pattern. Okay, and they all are parallel to each other. Since the incident rays are parallel, when they hit onto the when they hit onto the smooth surface, okay, so they are going to reflect back in the same pattern. They all all the reflected rays will be parallel to each other. So if a parallel beam of light is incident, then a parallel beam of light will be reflected. Is that clear? Okay. So that is the regular reflection. So irregular reflection, suppose if I take, if I take, okay, if I take this surface, this is a rough surface. Okay. This is a rough surface. So what happens here? So if I take a parallel beam of light is incident, Here, a parallel beam of light is incident, okay. Now, the reflection would not be in the same pattern as that of the incident beam of light. So, what happens here? This light may reflect here. This light may reflect in this direction. This light may reflect in this direction. So, what is happening here? Here, you could see this incident. Suppose if I name it as 1, 2 and 3, okay. This 1. This is 1, 1 dash, let me write, okay, and this is 2 dash, and here it is 3 dash. See here, 1, 2, 3, these 3 are incident, right, incident ray of light. So you can say it as a beam of light. A parallel beam of light is made to fall onto this rough surface, but here you see that 1, the 1 incident light, okay, you can see its reflection 1 dash here in this direction. The second ray of light, its reflection is in, its reflection is here, 2 dash, I'm sorry, okay. Now, the second ray is reflecting in this direction and here, the third light ray is reflecting in the other direction. All the three, it's not mandated that all the, uh, all the rays have to 
be in a different different direction no few will be in one direction they may, they may form a pattern some will be not forming the pattern but as one or the other ray is not going to form a pattern if he is not going to follow a pattern then that obviously will be a diffused reflection that will be a diffused reflection why what happens if it is a diffused reflection why are we discussing about this why are we discussing about this regular reflection and irregular reflection because here in the regular reflection since the light ray the reflection of light is going to follow a pattern if is going to follow a pattern image can be seen the image can be formed in such type of reflection whereas here the image will not be formed in order to put an example for this you know suppose if the if you go and stand in front of the mirror and if the light is incident on the mirror you could see your reflection you could see your image in that why is that you are able to see your image it's because the surface is smooth the surface is smooth the surface is shiny right so because of what whenever the light is incident on to the surface of that mirror it is going to reflect back in the same pattern as we have seen in the regular reflection it is not only with the mirror even if you take the new utensils at your, at your home which are shining whenever a light is made to fall and when you try to see your face into that utensil okay or a plate you can say take there you can see your face how is that possible how are you able to see it's because the regular reflection is taking place because of what you will be able to see as and when you are going to use those utensils you know the shiny okay that shine is going to fade away then it is going to become blur you will not be able to see your image the clear image why because the surface has now become rough you could see many scratches that this and all so you will not be able to see the clear image so that is the example for diffuse reflection or irregular reflection the same happens with the wall also so whenever the light is made to fall on the wall when you are you are switch on the light right so you have to see your image on the wall also why is that you are not able to see the image on the wall it's because of irregular reflection okay so whenever you are asked like why are we able to see the image in the mirror not in the on the wall then you can quote this one you can say that because of the regular and irregular reflection hope this would be easy to understand and make others also understand like why you are able to see the image in the plain mirror or in the shiny objects but why not on the other surfaces like when you see you see your face into the on the uh, door or on to the window pane okay or on to the walls it's because of irregular or diffuse reflection so hope this topic is also clear to you okay hope this i am not too fast or too slow if it is like too fast or too slow you can just go through this video very slowly or you can listen to this video once or twice you can make pause every now and then and you can understand the concept clearly and then you can move with that okay so hope this video will be helping you okay and uh, by after weaving all this all uh, this class okay all the terminologies or all the topics uh, hope you will be able to clear your doubts related to this topic okay yes now we have dealt with the regular and irregular reflection also next the question comes in your mind what is that question you might be thinking like how come sir comes to know that what questions we have in our mind okay now it's whatever the questions that i have in mind i'll be telling so that at least those questions would be vented out from your mind right so that would be clear okay what is that question that is how this surfaces are made reflective okay one is shiny objects they always reflect the light okay so other there are how they are made how are we able to see the our image in the mirror and all so how these mirrors are made so that question would be arising in your mind so to deal with that now we will move on to the important topic or you can say the core of this topic that is mirror that is mirror okay so this topic about the mirror okay so we'll start with a fresh mind okay in the next video so till the next video if i 
like um, by the time I download the next video, okay, and upload it onto the YouTube. So I wish that you all go through the classes, okay, go through all the topics that we have discussed in today's video, okay, and make sure that you have understood all the topics. Then in the next video, in the next part, definitely I'll come up with the mirror topic. Then we'll be dealing with the mirror topics. What are what is mirror? What are the types of the mirrors? Okay, and what are its characteristics? Okay, so I wish you all stay safe. Okay, so almost all COVID nineteen is trying to end. I believe. Okay, very soon our schools and colleges will be resumed. Okay, so then rather than this virtual classes, we would be in a real classes. Hope I pray that this pandemic ends. very soon so thank you so much for your, all your patience so please go through the video thank you so much